Hi, Mom. Today, for a few minutes, we're going to talk about the lunchroom, laughter as the best medicine, and the lost and found department. The lunchroom. So growing up in the 1950s, I went to St. James Catholic Grade School in Kenosha, Wisconsin. It was the Irish parish. The Italian parish school was full, so was the Slovak school, which were in walking distance. Um, so we went to St. James. There were four Italian families at St. James, and you knew it. <laughs> it was about a mile away, and yes, we walked to school, or we took the red line bus for a quarter. We had Dominican sisters, uh, Cincinnati Dominicans from Wisconsin here, a couple late teachers. I have wonderful memories, no horror stories about the sisters. I had all good religious women there. Our lunchroom at St. James was in the basement. And there were signs above the door and inside the room that read, Fallout Shelter. Now for those of you who are younger, a fallout shelter in the 1950s, right after the big war, uh, during the Cold War, they called it, a fallout shelter was where you would go to hide if Russia sent a nuclear bomb. And we as children were told that we would be safe there until the radiation went away in the wind. And as a kid, I wondered, how can our lunchroom be a fallout shelter? It's got windows. <laughs> but it was the 1950s. And if sister said it was a fallout shelter, it's a fallout shelter. <laughs> you could not question authority in the 1950s. Or as I remember asking my dad something that I wanted to do, and finally he'd say, I'd say, well, why can't I do it? And he said, because I said so. Because I said so. 1950s, you cannot question authority. First reading is from the prophet Jeremiah, and it appears as if God is saying, sometimes you have to question authority. He says, God says, Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the sheep. Because I'm thinking, if we didn't question authority, would we ever have exposed the cover-up by the bishops and the pope of all those children hurt by the clergy? If we didn't question authority, wouldn't we still be colonies of the British Empire? If we didn't question authority, would we have 40-hour work weeks? Would we have vacations and pensions and benefits? If we didn't question authority, would there still be children working in factories? Or bubblers in the South with signs that said, colored only? Or if... If we didn't question authority, I wouldn't be here because my mom was uh, in an arranged marriage situation. She was told who she was going to marry. And on the day she's supposed to go pick out the invitations with her fiance's family in Chicago, she got the car, went to the bus station, went to Madison, and eloped with my dad. <laughs> so if we would. If she didn't question authority, I wouldn't be here. So God says, when you find bad shepherds, he says, I'll get rid of them. And I'll appoint shepherds who care for my sheep. Laughter. Laughter is the best medicine is a phrase that you hear sometimes. And that they believe it's traced back to Proverbs 17, 22. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit zaps a person's strength. 
A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit zaps a person's strength. Yesterday at Mass, we had a 50th wedding anniversary for Dominic and Christine LaDuca, and I asked them and I asked everyone there, think back about all the times, those of you who are married, all the times that you laughed together uncontrollably, all the times you cried together, and sometimes those saddest times when you cried together, you ended up laughing again uncontrollably. And as a couple and as parents, one of the worst things I believe you could do is when your children start laughing in church, to tell them to be quiet. It's hard to stop laughing in church. And once you start laughing in church, you can't stop. And you think it's tough for you, you should see what, when it happens to the priest. <laughs> it only happened once in all 50 years that I've been a priest where I totally lost it. I was at a wedding in Kenosha, Wisconsin. I had the wedding, it went, it went picture perfect. It was after communion, I'm standing at the altar. The couple, the sanctuary was bigger, so the couple was kneeling in front of me, right in front of the altar. And the bride made the mistake of asking her aunt to sing the Ave Maria. And her aunt didn't know how to sing. <laughs> and so I kept my head down, because every phrase was painful. <laughs> and that wasn't bad enough, but there was a little three-year-old girl in her father's arms over here who mimicked every phrase after she sang it. <laughs> So we heard it twice. <laughs> so I, I'm, it's almost over. Through the grace of God, the song is almost over. And I think I'm okay. But I made the mistake of looking up and the couple was laughing like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the congregation was going like that. And I was trying not to laugh. And I was supposed to introduce the couple, give them a blessing and send everyone off in peace. And I looked up and I said, just go. <laughs> God loves you. <laughs> and it was on video. <laughs> so I see it occasionally. <laughs> the second reading is from St. Paul, writing to the people at Ephesus, North Lake, and Manches. And St. Paul says, brothers and sisters, don't for a minute think you're little. Don't for a minute think that you're not important. God sent his son, Jesus, to find you when you were far off. God wants you near. He loves you dearly. He will always send Jesus to find you. Don't for a minute think you're not important. Lost and found department. There's a box in the back of church that says lost and found. Every church I've been in has a lost and found box. Some have a lost and found room. <laughs> there, what do you find there? There's, there's hats, gloves, children's toys. At any given time, maybe a wallet, a phone, a piece of jewelry, car keys. I guess people lose things all the time Uber drivers have a whole list. They found bunk cakes in their, in their cars, a Disney World popcorn bucket, and one of them found a dinosaur costume. Just a, a small list of all the things that people lose. The policy at this church is that we keep the stuff for six months, and then we give it to St. Paul, St. Vincent de Paul Society. So if you lost something, check the box. Gospel today is from St. Mark, and Jesus says, this whole church is a lost and found department. The whole church is a lost and found department. He says, you and I sometimes come here and we're lost. We're just lost. And sometimes we come here and we're found. And we're found. So Jesus says to us, like he says to his apostles, 
come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while, and I will find you. So what's the message today then with the lunchroom, laughter is the best medicine, lost and found, Jeremiah the prophet, St. Paul, St. Mark, and our beloved Lord Jesus Christ. The message is this. Welcome to St. Teresa of Calcutta Parish, God's lost and found department. If you are lost, God will send Jesus to find you. If you are found, share your joyful and cheerful heart. If you are not safe where you live, tell someone. Question authority. For as Proverbs says, a broken spirit zaps a person's strength. Each one of you is holy and precious to God. No one can tell you differently. Don't believe anyone who tells you differently. Each one of you was formed and fashioned in your mother's wombs by God's loving hands. And he only made one of you. He only made one of you. In all of human history, no one has your fingerprints. All the people to follow, no one will have your fingerprints. So, if your lunchroom has windows, and if you feel not safe, or you know people who are not safe and they live in fear and trembling, let the church say, I'm holy and precious to God, and no one can take that away from me. I'm holy and precious to God, and no one can take that away from me. And if you're willing to let Jesus find you when you're lost, in loneliness or sin or just overwhelmed by life on this planet, let the church say, as Jesus says, come away to a deserted place and rest for a while. Come away to a deserted place and rest for a while. And finally, if you're willing to share your cheerful heart and not say words that zap a person's strength, let the church say, I'll never sing the Ave Maria at a wedding. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>